My name is Carlisle Kellum. My film is um, The Marketeer. It's a, uh, a short. Well, I started as a commercial photographer and did that for a while and started kind of dabbling with uh, video. Um, you know, I've always wanted to, to make, you know, from a young age I wanted to make films. I just didn't feel like I had the uh, resources where I was from. It wasn't something that you really, you know, uh, came across very often. Joined up with a commercial production company and uh, started making commercials um, and short films and so forth, documentaries. Um, that's kind of how it came to be. I would say two characters sit, are, are sitting in a diner uh, and they're discussing, um, I guess you could say, uh, everyday life or philosophical type things while a, a, a stranger looks on and watches them. And uh, One of the characters, her name is June in the story, um, has some kind of uh, strange uh, a reaction to the character that's looking on, and uh, that's pretty much all I can tell from, from there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a hard one to kind of sum up that way. It was intentional. Um, as a matter of fact, one thing I really wanted to do with this was I wanted to try to create a really long dialogue scene. And this has a lot to do with just being involved with theater for so long, where, I mean, most of it's dialogue. And, I mean, there's, there's stage stuff going on. But I wanted to create a really long di dialogue scene and, and, trying to, and try to create some kind of tension while this dialogue's going on, which is this other character, the man sitting at the bar. The people in the camera aren't going to know what I'm talking about. And see if I could create some kind of tension while these people are in dialogue without any real action happening and then kind of have, um, have all of the action happen right at the end. Whenever I talk about this, I start to feel kind of pretentious almost because some of the, um, some of the ideas that I had in my mind seem kind of strange or pretentious, for instance. I really wanted to put a lot of elements in the film that are kind of doing what the theme of the film is. For instance, you know, I'll put folly sounds and so forth in, um, like a phone ringing or a car driving by or something that kind of markets what's going on or, you know, there's a red car that drives by at one point, right? I mean, these are very common filmmaking techniques, but I really wanted to kind of do in the film what um, one of the characters is being accused of doing. I just wanted to somehow draw a correlation between the main character, um, the, two, um, the two main characters, their discussion, and what I'm doing, what's present on the screen. I guess if that makes any sense, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm inspired by everything I see, and then when I go out and do something, I'm sure those influences are coming out, and I don't necessarily know where they're coming from. I mean, sometimes I'll think of, you know, I want to do this in the style of so-and-so, but not with this one. I didn't really think of that. I didn't really think about doing it in the, in the style of of anything. It just kind of, it was kind of an organic process. Of course, low budget, we had the location, these other things, and I kind of just um, created as I went along uh, and just kind of set things up as I went along and lit things as I went along and didn't really, didn't really think too much about it beforehand. Another short that I made there was a story like that. Well, I was making a short, and this is more like what you were talking about before, but a funny story, a short that I was making um, maybe five or six years ago. Um, uh, there was a scene, we were shooting um, under a railroad uh, bridge in kind of a downtown area. 
And um, there was a scene where, and we had the permission of the film commission and so forth, but we didn't have anybody blocking off roads. We had, well, we did. We had one guy standing with a sign. The guy put his sign down and went to like smoke a cigarette or something like that. And uh, the scene was a man, an older man, maybe 60, running across a road and a Hispanic male chasing him with a gun. Of course, it was a fake gun. And he shoots him, and there's a squib, and fake blood comes out, and so forth. And um, a car of teenagers drove up as this action was happening. And, I mean, obviously, they couldn't see us because we were hidden behind the railway bridge. And I guess, obviously, they thought it was real. And, I mean, the car spun around and was gone, and you heard screaming, and it was gone within seconds. And then we all just kind of stood under the bridge and waited for the police to show up, because we knew they would, and they did. And they were like, you know, one of them said, yeah, we got a call that a Hispanic male was chasing a white male with a gun through under a bridge. Over. And we were like, yeah, we're just shooting a movie. And I guess they knew that. They knew that that was a good possibility because the film commission had probably contacted them because they didn't seem particularly, you know, they didn't come with guns raised or anything. But I still think about that sometimes, that those, those teenagers still think that they saw someone shot under that bridge over <laughs> Well, this is the first one we wanted because it was made in North Carolina. It was made in Charlotte. Um, I live in Atlanta. I did live in, I lived in Charlotte, though, before Atlanta. Um, and I made it there with um, a bunch of actors that I know from the theater community. I used to be really involved in the theater community. Um, and we really wanted to show it or premiere it somewhere near everybody that was involved and in North Carolina, so Asheville was the first place that we... I've visited a few. Um, I think the ones that were most memorable, and uh, this might be kind of going into a negative area, but um, the most memorable festivals were really bad ones, the bad ones. There's just something about a bad festival you know, when other people's work's being shown and they, and they don't get that right, you know, and people put a lot of time into a project and they get there to the festival and, um, you know, something goes wrong with the projection or things don't turn out the way they're supposed to or um, films aren't shown. Um, I think the emotion attached to that is, 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 is really strong. Festivals that I've attended, I mean, they, they were fun and interesting, but nothing that stood out to me as much as the, the negative experience at some of the other. Not, not to say that my uh, opinion of film festivals is negative. It's enjoyable to see your work um, in front of other people and to meet other filmmakers. But I think it's really interesting to uh, view other filmmakers' work and to, uh, you know, I don't just show up for my own film, but also to see the other filmmakers' films. And not, not so much from a, a competition perspective as much as just seeing what other people are doing. And, um, you know, just doing that in an environment where you're surrounded by your peers, um, people that are working on the same type of thing that, you know, you are, um, is, is really interesting. And it's, it, it, it also helps in developing my own material because, um, you know, I make films for myself first, but also for an audience, um, and to, to see how audiences react to things, to other people's work, helps me when, when I'm developing my own. And I'm not saying that just, you know, so I can go out and cater to somebody particularly, but it helps when I'm trying to figure out a problem of my own when writing something. The best way to find me would be my personal website, which is carlisle.kellum.com. Um, it's really the best way. <laughs> if you click, there's a, a link there, view work, and then there's a link there, um, reel and spots, and there folks can find commercial spots and some short films. Um, yeah, photography too. <laughs>